Infectious disease experts say Japan is facing a critical situation because of rubella. The number of cases this year is about to top 10,000. Babies born to women who contract the disease during pregnancy are at risk of developing eye, ear and heart disorders. Researchers at the National Institute of Infectious Diseases say 9,408 people were diagnosed with rubella or German measles since January. That's roughly four times the total for all of last year. Most of the men infected were in their 20s to 40s, while many women were in their 20s. The vaccination was either optional or only for girls when people of this age group were children. The institute's senior researcher says a majority of the cases reported so far involve patients who had not been immunized or could not recall getting shots as children. She says being vaccinated is the only way to prevent infection. Since the massive earthquake and tsunami in 2011, companies and local governments have been taking action to prepare for similar disasters in the future. A major earthquake off the south coast of Japan could trigger another massive tsunami. So companies are developing new approaches that they hope will help save people's lives. NHK World's Takeo Baba has more. Lights flash, a siren wails and smoke pours from a tall chimney. It's more than just a warning that a tsunami is expected. It's also a guide showing people in the vicinity where they should head for safety. This system was developed by a steel plate processing maker. We are a steel maker. We want to use our technology to help protect people's lives. The aim was to develop a system that would show people where to head for safety. All 23 of the company's employees submitted ideas. The company drew on its steel processing expertise to build the beacon. The hardest part was ensuring that the smoke would be emitted continuously. Standard smoke flares only emit smoke for slightly more than three minutes. We've managed to develop flares that can last for an hour. The company is now trying to pitch the new system to local governments in coastal areas of Japan. In low-lying coastal areas where there is no high ground, a number of towers and other structures have been built to serve as evacuation points. However, many structures are likely to suffer damage if they are hit by cars or other large objects swept away by the tsunami. Our evacuation tower resembles a bridge. In the 2011 tsunami, many homes and buildings were destroyed, but bridges tended to remain in place. This bridge maker developed a structure that was more like a bridge, with a wider gap between the pillars to reduce the impact of objects floating in the water. It conducted experiments with a local university to assess the impact of cars on various types of evacuation towers. Testing with a small-scale model of a conventional evacuation tower, they found many of the model cars ended up hitting the front of the tower. But they are designed for a new tower with a much wider gap between the support pillars, allowing the cars to be swept past easily. The first full-size structure using this new design will be built in October of this year. Our aim is to build an escape tower that will protect all the people who take shelter on it. As fears grow of another tsunami occurring in another part of Japan, companies are drawing on the expertise to come up with solutions and also create new business opportunities. Takeo Baba, NHK World, Nagoya. The Japanese government stresses the need to revive the country's agricultural sector by reducing unused farmland. 
The Agriculture Ministry released its annual report on Tuesday. It said 74% of rice farmers are aged 65 or older. Almost 400,000 hectares of farmland were unused as of 2010, nearly half of which was owned by non-farmers. That's because some aging farmers retired without successors, while an increasing number handed over land to their children who lived in urban areas. The government is proposing a nationwide network to lease unused farmland to motivated farmers to promote large-scale farming operations. Reviving the agricultural sector is one of the key targets of Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's growth strategy. Energy experts with the U.S. government have taken a look below the ground and spotted an opportunity. They say shell gas deposits could boost natural gas reserves by nearly 50 percent if people exploit them. The U.S. Energy Information Administration released a report estimating the abundance of shale gas and oil in bedrock worldwide. It says there are about 200 trillion cubic meters of the gas. The deposit would increase global natural gas reserves by 47 percent. The report estimates the largest shale gas deposits are in China, followed by Argentina, Algeria, the U.S., and Canada. U.S. energy companies are keen to develop the research. resource. Virginia-based firm Dominion built a plant in Maryland to import liquefied natural gas. But now it plans to use it to export shale gas instead. In a situation of being able to uh, uh, work with our allies in particular, uh, allies in Asia, allies in Europe, to help provide some of their energy needs. It's going to be a wonderful thing for our country overall. Japanese and South Korean firms hope to benefit as well. They want to import shale gas from the U.S. and sell Americans technology to use in power plants. Now, dodgeball is a pastime children around the world enjoy, but a yearly match between kids in northeastern Japan is more than a game. It's a key step in rice planting. <laughs> Six stage students from an elementary school put their dodgeball skills to the test in a muddy rice paddy. As they ran, their feet stirred up the mud and softened the earth for planting. I was all covered in mud. <laughs> the kids will come back to the paddy to plant rice seedlings. <laughs> 